But all right. 2017-18. First and foremost. Now we have three star school pride again. Look at us. Look at us. Do we have any point? Two unlocks. Let's go. That's huge. Two further unlocks. That's a big deal. Because we already have the practice gym maxed out. So now do we go study hall for generic offensive, defensive ability, and discipline? The injury clinic. I think we go with the speed, strength, and the quickness, right? Maybe one of each. But just generic offensive and defensive improvement would help. I think we go... Mm. I'm thinking I'm thinking one of each. Let's go one of each. If we can. I didn't realize you could randomly zoom into it. So we actually already have the level one study hall. And the level one weight room. So level two weight room, level two study hall. So we're already looking better there. The team will be even better on paper. Again, the roster. Doing something a little bit different. Alpine Eftit, our starting center. Jazzman Miles Davis will be at power forward so that both these guys can play because they're incredible. Rask for Raycroft at forward. And our guards, the now senior Little Richard and Brosella returns. Which means we have Nick Foles, the seventh, Dennis Rodman Jr., the newly named Jackson Wax and Flax, alongside Big Papa Pump, the 13th, Hall and Oates, and Slim Jim Meat Stick. And again, we have the red shirts, Vin Scully, Pass Me the Lube, Eddie Kingston, going to backfist some fools, and Eaton Dun Cruz as our red shirts. Uh, so yeah, three red shirt freshmen this year that hopefully won't end up leaving. If they were to leave, that would put us into a pretty, uh, pretty rough predicament. Why not the freshman is the sixth man? Because Foles is incredible, that's why. <laughs> And let's be honest, he's the first non-big man. He might as well be the sixth man. So he'll still get plenty of playing time. He'll still get plenty of playing time. Right out of the gates, we are going to start off with that up-tempo approach. That is the game plan there. And then recruitment-wise, uh, again, we send out the initial bit of interest to these guys. These are the only players that we're going to target. Um, the one three-star that's actually interested, the rest are four-stars who have no interest at all. And we'll see if we can battle our way in. Preseason top 25, number one Syracuse after winning the national title. Seton Hall were the runners-up, so they start second. It's pretty much what you would expect based heavily off of the tournament results. We got Western Kentucky and Old Dominion in there, and Cincy just keeps hanging around. They just keep hanging around. So let's do this. Preseason, essentially, a non conference. We take on the Belmont Bruins before heading down to Puerto Rico. Belmont. Will be our first game of the season. We'll see what we're dealing with. Our, uh, our ratings have gotten a little bit better, everybody. Just a smidge. This is officially the best team in the history of this program. Not even talking about just us in control, but like in a general sense. This is the best team this program's ever had. Hundred and two points. 29 points a game. Yeah, I don't think that'll stick. We are going to wait it out. Because we know we're not going to get all of them anyway. We are going to wait it out. Kind of get a, a better look at the stats down the road. So let's sim our first game of the season against Belmont. That we win. 87-66. to We take on the Portland State Vikings in Puerto Rico. And we beat them as well. 85-74. to Means we get to face... Uh, 
Well, a team that's won a national title during this dynasty mode, the Villanova Wildcats. Uh, this would be the biggest win in our program's history and would help us win the Puerto Rico tip-off. Like, this is a pretty damn big game. Let's see what happens. In-depth simming was a bad idea. Jesus Christ. We really do suck from an in-game simming perspective, don't we? Villanova kicks the ever-loving shit out of us. Should have just jumped into it or watched the menu. We'll never talk about that game again. Technically now 2-1. and one. We uh, move on. I mean, we missed like... We hit, like, what, one of our first 12 shots or some shit like that? The Navy Midshipmen. We win. 81-70. I wanted to see their ratings. Our old friends Vermont. And then Portland State again. So our old friends from our old conference in Vermont. And we still fucking lose to them. By 30... We bounce back in the next game, but god damn it. So four and two. I don't know why Vermont just always has our number. It's infuriating. Alright, none of these guys have signed yet. We're going to give it another month before we really start to push. We need to see some uh, accurate stats. Oh, god. Let's see what happens over the next week. We are on up-tempo to start, yes. Take on Rice. And we win all three games this week. Not bad. 7-2 and two now are the Black Bears. Got the Greyhounds, the NIU Huskies, and Bowling Green. After that, only one more game left this year. See what happens against the Huskies. Nice fat L, but we bounce back against Bowling Green. Don't know what happened on the Sunday. We won that, so we're 9-3 and three so far. 9-3. and three. We take on the Eastern Washington Shipbirds before heading in the conference play on January 1st. This is the best that we've ever done in terms of non-conference play. Pretty pissed we lost to Vermont. Villanova's understandable, but how the fuck did we get blown out by Vermont? Did we beat the Shipbirds? Did we beat them? Did we beat them? Yes, we did. 87-75. So we head into conference play with an electric 11-3 record. School Pride's gone up to four stars just like that. Interesting. The top 25 in the nation right now. You got the Oklahoma Sooners number one. You gotta look at who else is there. George Mason at 13 and 0. Team Prestige still at two. Well, yeah, we haven't fucking won anything. If we take a look at our player stats on the year. Raycroft stepping up, averaging 20 points a game. 17 for Little Richard. Eftit and Foles both at 9. Foles off the bench, too. And Davis at 7. Flaxen, Flaxen. Maybe uh, struggling a little bit. In terms of rebounds per game, 7 for the Jazz Man. So we do really well on the glass. 6 assists per game for Brosella. He and Jazzman, as well as Richard. Get a steal and then two blocks per game for Jazzman. Not bad. I will indeed check Team Pride. We might have gotten another upgrade. And we did. Good shout. Uh, we'll upgrade the generic abilities by another plus one. Four-star school pride. We're looking pretty good. Uh, in terms of recruiting, we can start to take a look at these guys now in a serious way. To see if there's anybody we actually want to get. So Kevin Lucas. Jesus God. Yeah, we should take a look at him to see if we can convince him. Power forward. Forbes. Also a beast. It's amazing what happens when you start looking at four-star talents. 
11 rebounds a game for Jamison, but only 13 points. Forbes had 8 rebounds a game. Lucas had 9. So I think we can uh, we can say the JD Jamison is going to be out of our out of our sights here. At forward, Dylan Tolbert, Tolbert, 15 points a game. Seven rebounds, four steals, Jesus. And Keith Soto, 16 points a game. So 16, four, and four. Honestly, I think the old Tolbert is looking pretty good, but Soto is very much in our backyard here. Sam Clawson at guard, 13 points a game, 11 assists. And a point guard, 14 points a game for Ray Postel. Corey had 18 points a game, 14 assists. Obviously, we don't really need a big man right now. We are losing Little Richard, but then Wax and Flax is there. It really is just the best big man available. That's who we should get. Technically another center if we wanted to keep Jazz Man or F'd it at power forward. So another center might not be the worst thing in the world, but even that it's it's honestly tough to tell. And then Dan Zawecki. He's not exactly killing it. I mean, he is interested, but I don't know. I think we can uh, put like the bare minimum amount of points in for Dan Zawecki just to secure him. At the same time, I don't know if we want to use that on a three-star because what if there's a four-star who's interested later on? You know, if we do have a good season. I don't really know who my number one target is here, though. That's the issue. Honestly, we're going to base it off of what everything costs. So six points. Three points for send package for head. Tolbert's on nine points. Forbes is on three. Honestly, Tolbert, just for how expensive he's going to be, in terms of the points, we're going to take him off the list. Postal was on six. Again, Head and Forbes were on three. Lucas is on nine, so I hate to say it, but I think we're going to take out the Saskatoon option. Clawson on three. Postal, we're going to take out two. Then we got Soto. Okay. So we're down to those primary four. Let's see if we can start making any headway here. Honestly, our smartest move might just be holding on to these damn points to make sure nobody can leave. For now, we focus on the conference. We start off against George Washington and win by nine. We take on Andy Dufresne, party of four. Dufresne, party of four. And we lose by six. What about Dayton? We win 100 to 76. I think that's the first time we put up 100 points. And then we have Fordham. Fordham. Who we should kick the ever loving hell out of. I'm going to go over to recruiting real quick. So we didn't make up any ground on Sam Clawson. But the other three, their interest went up a little bit. So, Sam, you can fuck off. So Corey Head, let's get that phone interview in there. Forbes, phone interview. Soto, phone interview. Fordham, we destroyed them by 40 points. LaSalle, beat them by 12. Temple. Beat them by 10. And LaSalle again. Looks like a loss. Nope, it's a win. 97-76. We are 17-4. and four.
I'm trying not to get hyped. I'm trying so hard not to get hyped up right now. Please, just... I, I can't get my hopes up. We're looking very good in terms of conference win percentage. UMass has a ways to go. We're looking pretty damn good. But we got a ways to go. Alright, all three of these guys. Still positive interest. We'll start off with the assistant coach phone call. And see if that helps us at all. Didn't mean to go team prestige. Actually, no, yes, I did. Never mind. We're fine. We take on Charlotte, who ended our season last year, and Xavier. The ex-Xavier, the X-Men. Charlotte beats us 98-75. to We bounce back the next day and win by three, but Charlotte continues to give us issues. It's still just only our second conference loss. We're 18-5. and Recruitment is stalled out for Devin Forbes. We're going to remove him from the list. We're down to two. Corey Head and Keith Soto. We're going to do the head coach visit for Corey Head. We'll talk about location. And we're going to do the head coach visit for Soto. He's literally, he literally is in our backyard. Like, this is ridiculous. We'll sim the next week. Rivalry week, of course we don't have any because we switched conferences. At least I presume it's rivalry week. 18 and 5. This is already going to be our best record ever. We stall out on Corey Head. We won't waste any more time. Keith Soto, though, we're still making some improvements. The hometown boy. So I did the head coach visit, but it's not showing the invite to game option. Even though we hit the prerequisite, so that kind of sucks. Program prestige is not a factor. Distance from us will not be a factor. Yeah, you don't say. Well, I did the head coach visit. didn't work. Let's do the unofficial school visit. Let's watch one of his games as well. We're going all in on this guy. The X-Men, Richmond. And then that brings us to a game against George Washington. We beat the X-Men again. Probably going to lose to Richmond. We beat the Spiders for the first time. On the road, no less. 20 and 5. I had to know. Massachusetts, though, is still undefeated. Fuck. We're right there with George Washington, and that's who we play next. This is a gigantic game coming up. Absolutely gigantic. For tournament watch, where are we at? Are we mentioned at all? No, we're still not being mentioned in that regard. Still making progress with Soto. I'm going to have to do the, the head coach visit again. I'm trying to unlock send the house. Head coach visit. Coaching strategy. Let's try to sell them on that. This is our third season in this conference. 
huge game against George Washington, and then we take on Andy Dufresne. We look, we get fucking blown out by GW. Jesus Christ, we didn't show up, and that's our first set of back-to-back -back losses. I think all season, at the worst possible time, down to twenty and seven. We finally get Soto up to low interest. We have a fighting chance. Great quickness, average rebounder. Style of play isn't a factor. Okay, we can officially invite him to a game. We'll invite him to the game against Dayton. Send the house cost 15 points. Have to beat Dayton this weekend with Soto in the house. Boys, you gotta win this. Fuck the last two losses. We have to win this. Please, 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 please. Fuck yeah. You don't want to lose when you have somebody visiting that week. We're 21 and 7. Still at low interest, but it still feels like we have a fighting chance. And again, the prerequisites aren't unlocking. I cannot hit send the house. Um, that cost 15 points, so technically we have 7 points. We'll do an assistant coach visit. Though that, that not unlocking is fucking brutal. Let's talk about playing time. Saves us just enough points. So we're trying like hell. We got Richmond and Temple to round out the regular season. We are going to make the conference tournament again. No doubt about that. Won't be as the number one team, though, because UMass has just decided to not lose at all. We beat Richmond twice in the same season. And we beat Temple as well. Our best regular season ever. 23-7. and seven is still a phenomenal season. Especially in this tough of a conference. Soto's up to medium! We can hit send the house! Oh my god. We're gonna hit send the house and we gotta offer him the scholarship. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hit send the house as soon as I wanted. We might have a chance. We might. I think we're gonna... Do we offer Dan Zawaki? Let's take a look at his stats. Eh. Nine points a game, four assists. I'll hold off. Soto, please. Please sign with us. As we wrap up the regular season. Let's take a look here. Top 25. Syracuse will finish the season. They are the defending champions, and they are still the number one team in the nation. Conference standings, UMass lost a game. They'll be the number one seed, and it looks like we'll have the three seed in this tournament. In terms of our player stats for the year, 18 points a game for the senior, Little Richard. As well as Rask for Raycroft, effed it also over uh, double digits in terms of points per game. The rebounds, I mean, we got some rebound beasts. Just some machines in that regard. Six assists per game for Brosella. Both guards averaging at least a steal per game. Two blocks for Miles Davis. I am going to try to bring back the whole watching the game thing. We'll see if we can get away with it. For the moment, let us sim. And round out the regular season here in 2018. Conference tournament-wise... We do get a first round bye. We are immediately in the quarterfinals. Which is tremendous. Damn, what 
a spot we're in right now. What a spot we're in right now. I'm gonna back out of the mode real quick. Let me go into play now. Can I do... Let me just see if I can jump into a game without it crashing. Because I could before. What a bank shot. Love to see it. Bump fake. So if I jump into the sim, it's okay. Or if I, if I start the game immediately, it's fine. It's only when I try to jump into the sim that it looks like it has issues loading properly. Maybe there is a way for me to fix that. Maybe there isn't. I'm not sure. Regardless, here we go. Our first game. In this A-10 tournament. Who will it be against? It's going to be St. Joe's. UMass knockout Dufresne. I know it's Duquesne. I don't care. Andy Dufresne. So, it's us against St. Joseph's. The winner plays UMass. Other sides, George Washington and Charlotte. Tough situation to be in. A real tough situation to be in. <sighs> Fuck. Let's go look at their squad here. Let's go look at their squad. See, the problem is, I don't want to jump in and potentially like, oh, we would have lost, and then we ended up winning. Like, I don't want to benefit in that way. They got a good team, man. A lot of talent at forward. Not an easy game. Sports fan, uh, I mean, I can do that, but that still means we have to watch the whole game. Which, grand five minute halves isn't that bad. Again, I'm going to save it for big moments like a conference tournament final or March Madness games themselves. Can we beat them? Boys, don't blow it. This is an amazing opportunity that you have. And for whatever fucking reason, whenever I jump into this sim, we cannot hit shots at the start of a game. Might as well see if it'll work. The last time I'll ever attempt this. If it forces a restart, it forces a restart. And if we lose again, we lose again. But. Yeah. Okay. So it freezes whenever you try to jump in. Uh, that'll technically get us one more opportunity. Which, um, yeah. Yeah. I'll take, I'll take one more fucking opportunity because, my God. I know they're a good team, but Jesus Christ, did this team just blow it. So, hey, we'll see what happens, but now we know if we're going to watch a game, we got to watch the full thing. At least five and a half. Uh, I fully expect us to lose again. Fully. So, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to play it off as, oh no, the game, like we used to do in the past. It's just, it was worth seeing one more time if we could, uh, if we could get it to work. We couldn't. So, yeah. Just kind of is what it is at this stage. Get ready for the Blake Griffin sound effect again. It's so fucking stupid. I love it. So yeah, I'm not sure what the issue is with jumping in and watching the game late because it worked before. I don't know if it's... um. I don't know if it's just... I didn't really change anything with the emulator settings. Like, I don't know what's causing it. So, we'll uh, we'll work around it. We'll work around it. Boys, you get one more chance to not fucking blow it. Please, I'm begging you. With this new lease on life. Actually do something, and they are. 
If we win this, I'm simming it for a third time. If it'll let me. We might not even fucking- we blew it. Oh my god, we blew it. We had him! And they outscored us 47-24 in the second half. Well, there you go. We lose like we were supposed to. We're better, but we just can't... We just can't take that next step. What a hell of a way for Little Richard's uh, run to end here. One of the best players in the history of humane basketball, no doubt. Fuck. All right. Well, let's see who wins the national title this season. I almost, I almost don't even want to like watch for the upsets and shit at this point. I, I'm just so disappointed. Everyone in America is awaiting the committee's final selections. We have no chance of making it. We're not in a strong enough conference to make it without getting an automatic bid at this rate. So. There is no NIT representation either. George Washington made it, though. If we had at least made the final... If we had at least made the final... I think we could have at least made it into the NIT. Let's find out. Let's sim all the way up to the Elite Eight and just see how this plays out. We'll recap it all at once instead of going week by week. So out of the West region, you had BYU over Clemson. Uh, you had... I don't even know who the fuck... I don't know who the fuck would CP be in this instance. Cal Poly beat Tennessee. Cincy over Syracuse, so there will be a new champion as Cincy makes it out of the West. The Midwest, you had Michigan falling in round one. Fucking Indiana lost in round one to UNC Greensboro. And ultimately, out of the Midwest, it is going to be Oklahoma State over Duke. So you have a four seed in Cincinnati and a sixth seed in Oklahoma State making it to the final four so far. In the East region, it comes down to number one, Stanford, and number seven, OSU and Stanford. Moving on to the final four, and in the South, it is number one seed, Arkansas. So the final four, two number one seeds, it's Arkansas and Stanford. Arkansas will take on Cincy, OSU taking on Stanford here, so let's see. It'll be Stanford and Arkansas. Both teams have won a national title, I do believe. No, Arkansas has and Alabama has, though. National title in 2018 goes to Stanford. Those damn trees. So Stanford win the national title in 2018. Brings us to the offseason. We still don't know if we even got that four-star recruit. We have no idea. The late push. We didn't get him. We got it up to medium, but he didn't sign. We just ran out of time, and I gotta be honest, I feel like we got shafted a little bit. Um, because there were two weeks that were burned where I had to double up on doing activities that should have unlocked the next activity, so that fucking blows. In terms of players leaving... Little Richard graduates, Nick Foles, Hall and & Oates, and Eaton Dunn Cruz wants to transfer out, and I got no way to help him stay. So we're losing the point guard, Eaton Dunn Cruz. Little Richard. Decent chance of getting drafted. Can average 15 points in his career here. Nick Foles, the seventh. Pretty solid, all things considered. Average pretty consistent minutes. Mr. B Major, thank you for the 10. 
months. How the heck are you, buddy? Uh, there was Hall and Oates, who, yeah, was never, uh, never a big player. And then Eaton Dunn Cruz was red shirt this season and elects to leave. So off-season recruiting, major, I mean, that's, they're the best they've ever been, but we have still yet to make another NCAA tournament, unfortunately. But that was our best season ever at 23-8. and eight. Let's find the interest. High interest or better. No NIT either, unfortunately. We got a bunch of three stars who are willing to come here. No four stars, at least for highest interest. Even, yeah, nobody with medium interest. So we will be able to bring in some three stars, which is good. Um, there's one guy, Devin Garrison, who's on high, as well as David Becker. Uh, honestly, we're not even going to waste our time with them. Oh, good for you. Shout out to Don't Friend Zone Me 69. Okay. So those three star options here. We need. Is that John Postel? Not the same one that we were looking at before. Okay. Let's uh, get a little bit of that early scouting in there. We have a shitload of points. An absolute shitload. So we're going to be able to kind of max out those initial offers to every single one of these players. And still have quite a few points left over to try to pull this off. And the care package might be a little bit much, but... Uh, ooh, I just noticed how much watch game was getting uh, in terms of expense, but... Honestly, I don't think we're going to have to do much in terms of selling. It's because they're already on high interest. It's just going to be making sure that we get the best guys available. So we should still be okay. Yeah, we got five points left, but it doesn't cost anything to send out scholarships. So, we should be okay. More scholarships available, more points. I mean, maybe, yeah. It would make sense. So, let's take a look at our dudes here. Apparently, it doesn't want to show the dudes that I'm actually targeting. So, highest interest... Okay, there we go. Now it is showing them. So we get this power forward, Caleb Gomez out of Ottawa, Kansas. Nine points a game, eight rebounds. Understands passing, below average court speed. Hmm. A forward, John Hart. Out of Connecticut, George Washington directly competing with us for him. 18 points a game for this guy. Doesn't do much else but score. And again, I don't believe we need anybody specific. We don't. And 18 points a game. The threes, not that great. You're right that he can't shoot. Shooting guard, Brady Brayton. Didn't want to, even though I fucking scouted him out, didn't I? It didn't give me anything for his numbers. Apparently he's pretty quick. Or maybe I forgot to do internet research? I guess I did. Could have sworn I sent him a letter of interest too. John Postel. 13 points a game. Good three-point shooter as well. Rebounds, steals, assists. He's pretty well-rounded. Quick feet. Average of best offensive rebounder. I mean, he's a shooting guard, so that's fine. And then a point guard, Eric Coleman. Incredibly quick with the ball. And didn't give me the fucking points. Daniel Spoto. One if I ball handler. Outstanding ball handler, apparently. 
And then Nathan Cummings, we don't have his numbers either. Also outstanding ball handler. Don't have any points left to do anything else. I swear, it's like you hit buttons and sometimes the shit doesn't go through. It's a bit interesting. Alright. Well, we'll sim another week just to make sure we uh, kind of have the full, the full scope. Uh, Coleman ends up going to MSU. Is what it is. So again, Caleb Gomez. Nine points, eight rebounds a game. I mean, it says understands the importance of moving the ball, but it's not like he picks up assists. So, eh. Forward. There's John Hart, who can put up points, but can't shoot the damn ball. Four scholarships here, too. Shooting guard, Brayton. Still isn't going to give me... What the fuck's going on? <laughs> Again, it didn't give me his game stats. Okay. Then what about Postel? 13 points and just a well-rounded nature. It is an EA game, after all. Spoto didn't give me his stats either. All we have, though, is amazing ball handler for he and Cummings. Honestly, at this rate, fuck it. First come, first serve. First come, first serve. There's not anybody that I... There's not like that crazy group where it's like, we must get this guy and this guy, and then, okay, the final two, who cares? Like, Let's just get who we can get. If they're not that good, we can end up cutting them anyway. Not that big of a deal. We can afford to be a little bit aggressive there. So It's just a bummer, man. We did so well in the regular season. So we end up with John Postel at guard, Daniel Spoto, Caleb Gomez, and Nathan Cummings, the other point guard. It's not bad. A few more three stars brought into the fold. So what is our team going to look like? Our team's going to look pretty damn good. Going to look pretty damn good. Hart was, uh, he had already signed with somebody. Alright, so Postal's not bad. Let's see what we have here. We look at this team as they are. Uh, I was going to say, we got a real shortage of forwards. We're clearly going to need to scout out a forward this upcoming season. So at point guard, we have four dudes. Brosella is a senior, Big Papa Pump is a junior, and then it's Spoto and Cummings. We're going to redshirt both of them probably. It kind of suck to have one of them lose, but since we have a senior, we at least have one scholarship. At guard, it's Jackson Wax and Flax taking over. With Vin Scully behind him for good depth. John Postel uh, might be the, the fifth man this year. I don't know. We might try to redshirt him too. Forward, we got Rask for Raycroft as a senior. And then Pass Me the Lube is up to 76. For the power forwards, good amount of depth there too. Two seniors as well, Rodman and Meatstick. So we're not going to really have to worry about uh, opening up spots for scholarships. We have a couple of seniors. And Jazzman and Alpine are both fucking phenomenal. So, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to redshirt Nathan Cummings this year. We're going to redshirt Spato. I mean, I hope he doesn't leave, but I think Postal will also get redshirt. And then the, uh, the young power forward, Caleb Gomez. We'll also get a red shirt this season. So those will be our four. It's the four we just brought in. If they leave, they leave. But we should be okay otherwise. So pretty straightforward decision making there, if we're being honest. It's nice to get to the point where it's just like, yeah, red shirt the freshman. But the recruitment wasn't amazing. Uh, we get invited not to Puerto Rico. We get invited to Anaheim. The 2018 Anaheim Classic. So this is the most prestigious preseason tournament we've gotten invited to yet. And we are tied with the UMass Minutemen for the best squad 
in the conference. These kids know how to win big games. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So we have four scholarships coming in. Team roster, we know we'll set it up in a minute. The schedule, I am certainly not playing fucking Clemson or West Virginia. You can fuck right off with that. Let's go back to the America East, play some of our old friends. We'll take on UMBC. Certainly not going to try to be a fucking... I mean, honestly, I mean, you know, we could play a ranked team. But what are the odds that it goes well? Only reason to do it is to try to essentially force our way into, like, the conversation. But I'd rather pad our record a little bit, if I'm being honest. I don't know. Maybe we should have... Maybe we should have a little bit more of a target. Maybe we just target a bunch of teams that are currently ranked... Maybe we do. Maybe we just go through and target some ranked teams. Maybe we fucking find a way. Maybe we just get stomped on. Who knows? Who the hell knows? But yeah, maybe we be a little bit more aggressive. There are certainly some teams you know, on the outside looking in. Or just inside, like George Mason, we could just, fuck it, why not go after George Mason, you know? Maybe ruin somebody's season. Yeah, fuck it. Arizona! Nope, they don't want to play us because they'd crush us. Stanford? Nope. <laughs> now it's time to get insulted. Kentucky! Mississippi State. No ranked teams are apparently going to view us as a challenge. Except for Virginia that I took out. Good to know. North Carolina. Minnesota says no. Ohio State says no. Oklahoma State says no. Kansas says no. No from Georgetown. No from Louisville. No from West Virginia. All right. Well, there's the uh, swift kick to the dick of how we're viewed. Let's take on our old friend, the BU Terriers. And that'll be our schedule. Preseason training. Honestly, offensively, we're not bad. We want to focus big time on defense and conditioning this season. That is the game plan. Let's learn how to play some goddamn defense. Let's just go 50-50 because it's a bit fucked up at the moment. Recruitment-wise, will we actually get anybody that, uh, that's good? We need to hope so. <laughs> Medium interest or more. Couple of two stars. One three star in Ainsley Spears. Power forward, nobody. Small forward, Matthew Chester. Sylvester Gamble. Andrew Neal. Uh, guard. This is bad, man. Four dudes. Four. A center and three forwards. We're going to need a forward, so that helps, but... Between last year and what looks like this season, our recruitment uh, possibilities falling apart was not what we needed. 